Looks like I've got some free time today. Okay, so... Yeah, I've got a record collection now. Because I spoke to the other guy a little while ago. Anyway, let's chat with Bryce. I don't think I've been this far on his story before. Yeah, this is new. This is definitely new. Okay, so it's a nighttime beach. There you are. Yo, what's up? Seems like you're the last one. I thought I was on time though. <laughs> oh, you are. It's just that everybody always gets so excited about this and they come early. I thought it was strange how late you're holding this little get together anyway. It's simple really. Now we get this beach all to ourselves. Before you go meet the others, I should probably warn you. What's that? There's someone here you may not approve of. Okay, who's that? Maverick. Eh, uh, yeah, that guy. Why is he here? All things considered, I think it's better for him to be here where I can watch him than if he was out there doing who knows what. You know what I mean? That's a fair point. Okay, besides, if I invited you and not him, I'm not sure how he would have reacted. He's always come to my barbecues before. Plus, maybe if I talk to him, I can find out what he's up to. Does he know that I'm coming? <laughs> Yes, and he assured me that he will keep the peace. Can you do the same? Uh, hell no. Um, yeah, sure. No problem. I appreciate that. Sweet. Let's just hope that there won't be any more incidents. Okay, let's go meet the others. As we walked a few paces, I saw some familiar faces. Usually there'd be more people here, but with everything else that's going on, some of the others at the department couldn't get any time off. Yo, everyone, guess who's here? That's me. <laughs> oh, you remember Zhong, the waiter at the bar, no problem. Yo, what's up? Who's this? Hey Sebastian, no hat today. Has it <laughs> I've never seen him without the hat, that's crazy. Maverick, yo what's up my dude? Did Bryce tell you to be nice to me? Or just hello? Let's just say hello. Hey, how's it going my dude? <laughs> Silent treatment. Okay, let's get this barbecue started. Oh, what a gathering. It's five of us. I don't see a grill or anything here. And where's the firewood? You see that pile of stones over there? That's our grill. And firewood. Well, we don't need that. Well, they are dragons, I suppose. Okay, who shall light the fire? I could make my own this time. Very subtle, Sebastian. Okay. No need to be subtle about it, Jean. Your fire stunk up the whole area last year, and it made everything taste weird. Oh my god. I didn't notice a difference. Yeah, Maverick just eats the food. Yeah, because everything tastes the same to you. <laughs> I told you, I got the flu. I'm pretty sure you gave us more than just your fire. I think we got some of your spit in there too. Oh my god. Yeah, because of the flu, everything was congested, so it was hard to get out anything at all. That's, that's grim, that's too much information. You're not making this any better, dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm just telling you how it is. Besides, it wasn't even my idea to light the fire. You were all like, oh, Zhong never lit the fire. He should do it. Don't blame me for getting what you wanted. Yeah, and we learned our lesson. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Zhong. Not even once. You wouldn't be complaining so much about it if it wasn't for the flu I had. Maybe I should light it again and prove you all wrong. No, thanks. Last year's bad enough. <laughs> Why don't you do it, Bryce? I'm not sure if I'm feeling up for the task. Why doesn't Ushio do it? Because I can't breathe fire. I like that idea. Maverick, not helping. Yeah. It seems we have a, a unanimous decision here. Go ahead, show us what you got. I can't set a fire. Suddenly, they all looked at me, clearly expecting me to light the fire for them. Uh. You got any matches? <laughs> Um, I don't want to disappoint you, but, uh, they were all still watching me, not moving or batting an eye, when suddenly, laughter erupted. You bastards, set me up. Okay, I get it, joke's on me. Should have seen your face though, alright. <laughs> That's harsh, don't pay any heed to them, they're always like this. That banter, alright, I noticed this. Seriously, who should light the fire? You really want to do it, don't you, Seb? Is it that obvious? Just go ahead. We already agreed Zhong is not going to do it. Yo, I told you I could prove you wrong this time. Yeah, let's not ruin our barbecue two years in a row, please. Maybe next year. I don't feel up for it this year. 
And with Maverick's aim, he probably shouldn't do it either. I'd rather not risk anything. I could hit you any time. Yeah, sure. But we want to have a barbecue, not set the whole beach on fire. <laughs> Besides, Sebastian's fire always makes the food so crisp and smoky. It's good shit. Any objections? No. Nope. No. Nope. Master of Ceremony, would you light the fire, please? It's not an easy job. Someone's gonna do it. Okay, light the fire. Sebastian went up to the small bed of stones they had prepared. Since his back was turned toward me, I couldn't exactly see what he did, but a few seconds later, a fire started burning among the stones. There we go, good job. No problem. Okay, pick your poison. Oh, we're we going for drinks now. Just to get you up to speed, we've pretty much got everything that you could ask for. Of course, we have all varieties of meat, but we also have some vegetables and cheese if you're into that sort of thing. We even got some of the algae stuff we usually bring for Naomi, one of the girls at the department, but she couldn't come tonight. Help yourself and throw it on the fire. Sebastian always gets some veggies with his meat, whereas Jean goes totally crazy over the cheese stuff. Now that I think about it, maybe it was just the damn cheese that made everything so bad last time. Shut up dude, or else I'll force feed you some of it, okay. Keep your cheese to yourself, please. Where was I? Okay, I go for the meat, personally. As I said, the algae is normally for Naomi. She really likes the stuff, but she's one of the water kinds, so that's not a surprise. I tried it myself once, not really my kind of thing, but feel free to take some if you want. And then there's Maverick, he just eats whatever he gets. Okay, a few years ago, a sandstone managed to hide between some slabs of meat he got. He didn't even notice and just kept going. Wow, this guy's a savage. Yeah, but that was with Bryce's cooking, so I couldn't tell the difference. Oh yeah, you suck Bryce at cooking. Everyone's back. After all of us made our selection and put it on the fire, we sat down in a circle around it. Of course, Bryce made sure that Maverick and I were not sitting next to each other. So Bryce, how's that stint with Emma going for you? It's weird. I'm not even really doing anything. I just have to follow her around and stand guard in her office. But what's worse, I think I found out why she wanted me to do the whole thing in the first place. Okay, why? It's kind of embarrassing to be honest. No, you definitely gotta tell us. <laughs> okay, the real reason why she wants me to be around her so much is that she totally has the hots for me. Really? Come on, dude. <laughs> Are you serious? You all know what she's like in public, but as soon as it's only the two of us in the room, she's like a totally different person. It's unreal. <laughs> I mean, I believe that she's different in private, but still. Of course, Bryce. When you make up a story, just going out with a high-ranking politician isn't enough. Obviously, she also can't resist your manly allure. <laughs> but it's true. I'm not even interested in her. For one, she isn't really my type. And regardless if it's a public or private persona, her personality really sucks. I agree with that one. What was that about sucking? Whoa. <laughs> Shut up, dude. If no one wants to believe me, I'll just stop before I get to the really bad stuff. I can actually confirm that she does act like a totally different person when she doesn't think she's being watched by the general public. Oh yeah, because she thought that I was okay. But in a public stance, she doesn't like me. Okay... Okay, Bryce, why don't you tell us more? What exactly does she like about you? What's not to like? This dude ain't got no shame. <laughs> we get it, Bryce. Change the subject. It's true, I swear. Then give us some details. What's she like in private? It all started innocently enough, but as I told you, when we were alone, she started to get weird after a while. She wasn't even remotely subtle about it either. Once, even the words cavity search came up. From her, mind you, not me. I can't even listen to this dude. <laughs> and then later, she was suddenly like, Oh, my back is so stiff. Would you mind giving me a massage? You look like you have the proper strength to give me a good one. And she's not even trying to hide it. Did you give it to her? Of <laughs> course not. I told her I'm no good with massages. That's the truth. Who would have thought? Do you really believe him, Seb? I'm not judging. I'm just listening. <laughs> Emma wanting you to give her a massage hardly constitutes her having the hots for you, though. I'm not done yet though. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Earlier today, she told me how nice it would be for a child to grow up with two leaders for parents. Actually, I don't think even Bryce could have come up with that one on his own. Not buying it, dude. <laughs> okay, at least you believe me. Uh, I'm not taking sides. Yeah, yeah, I believe you. 
I can totally picture everyone acting like that. I actually can't, but I don't know. If I believe it, it must be true. <laughs> you can't argue with that logic. Okay, maybe it's just the alcohol talking. Okay, I didn't even have anything yet. Sure, but with as much as you drink, your blood is like at least 10% beer by now. I bet you can't even get completely sober anymore. <laughs> anyway, what do you think I should do about her? Nothing, because you made the whole thing up in the first place. If I don't do anything, I'll probably end up having to marry her or something. And at that point, your story would actually be credible. <laughs> Why don't you just tell us to stop? Not that easy. Considering her positions, even though I'm the chief, there's nothing I can do to prevent her from putting me off the case and making me into her personal bodyguard. Hmm, if I tell her off too strongly, she could totally make my professional life a nightmare. And she totally would, yeah, Remy's, yeah, he's testament to that. Okay, so this situation requires careful deliberation and subtlety. Not exactly your strong suits, Bryce. That's why I'm asking you lot. Not that you're much better, though. Maybe you should just play along for a while and see what happens, and then, once the time is right, you strike. <laughs> and strike refers to what, exactly? I'm not going to indulge her in any way, shape, or form. Oh, this is the kind of situation that's going to cause a huge uproar if I include it in my memoir. You're writing a memoir? Who's going to read that thing, anyway? Well, I know at least one person. Okay, what do you think I should do? Uh, da 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 Play along, see what happens. Seriously, you think I should string her along? Well, you said she could make your professional life a nightmare, but if you play along a little, maybe the opposite is true as well. Not a bad idea now I think about it. Okay, that makes me curious though. How does dating work in this world, considering there are so many sentient species around here? Is dating between different species encouraged? Maybe that's why Emma is so interested. Is there ever any crossbreeding? I'm sure these questions will go over well in this group. Okay. Crossbreeding. Funny. Well, there isn't any crossbreeding. It doesn't work like that. Huh? Besides, I thought you were into biology. Shouldn't you already know where hatchlings come from? You're a completely different life form from what I've seen before, so I didn't want to make any assumptions. There are many interspecies couples, though. And what happens if those couples want to have a child? There are plenty of options, though usually it's either adoption, or a child where only one of the parents is biologically related. Emma totally wants my kids though. <laughs> Don't you want to be a father? Hell no, I'm not ready for that. I wouldn't even know what to do with a hatchling. I'd probably end up breaking its neck by accident or something. Okay, what about you? What about me? Are you having the hots for someone here, as Bryce would put it? To be honest, I've got no idea how that kind of relationship would be viewed where I come from. Since we only have one sentient species, I'm not sure what kind of social norms we developed if that changed. Technically speaking, your dating one of us is no different than Emma dating Sebastian, for example. Hey, I'm not getting between the beautiful thing Emma and Bryce have going on. <laughs> if you ask me, you can do whatever you like as long as you're here. Knock yourself out. Okay. If she's been hanging out with you a lot though, Bryce. Oh. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so what, he's a cool person in my book. Or do any of you disagree? Okay, no comment, Maverick. By the way, I think the food should be ready now, let's eat. Okay, slowly, everyone shuffled toward the fire, which by now had become nothing more than an eerily glowing pile that illuminated the area. One by one, everyone took their hot food from the stone bed and placed it onto the provided paper plates and bowls. When it was my turn, I hesitated, since I could still feel the heat radiating from the stones. Something the matter. I think it's too hot for me to handle. Right, no scales. Let me get that for you. Cheers, my dude. Cheers. We resumed our positions in the circle around the glowing stones, and I waited for my meal to cool down while the others started eating. Yeah, crisp and smoky. Good job, Seb. No problem. It's good shit. I'm still not sure how you can eat that cheese stuff though, Zhong. <laughs> Are you going to make my fun of my food choices again? To be fair, we make fun of everyone and everything here. I don't mind the cheese. Maverick will eat anything. You mind eating the whole bed of stones and everything on it as well. At least I try something different every once in a while. I do too, but I think there are at least five different kinds of meat this time around. Case in point. 
Okay, the food remaining on the stone slowly disappeared as everyone got their additional helpings. Soon, even the last piece was gone and silence started to set in as the banter slowly died down. Okay, I'm gone. Later, Zhang. Ready? Hey, the babysitter can only stay for so long. Alright. Yeah, I should also be heading off. You know I'm starting early tomorrow. Well, guess we all got what we came for. What about you, Maverick? Looks like this party's over anyway. Okay, don't you all get lost in the dark then. Okay, of course. And until next year. Thanks for inviting me, Bryce. Later, Maverick. I suppose I should be heading off as well. Oh no, you don't. <laughs> what are we talking about? Well, they all live in the vicinity, but your apartment is on the other side of town. I'm not letting you go home alone at this hour. Riz has been operating during the night, and he may just be waiting for an opportunity like this. Okay. Now what? Sleep over at my place. <laughs> if you insist. Damn, no one left without cleaning up. At least you're still here to help out. Alright, cool. Let's clean up. That's a responsible thing. We started to clean up together, but with the amount of trash left by five people, it was clear it would take a while. Hey, do you want to know where I got these scars? I bet you're curious. Hmm, what scars? I never even noticed. Not if you're uncomfortable with telling me. Go right ahead. Not if you're uncomfortable with telling me. Let's be considerate. No trouble, gotta pass the time somehow. At least they make me look extra intimidating at my job. No one's going to mess with a big, rugged chief of police. <laughs> You'd probably think I got them in some crazy near-death case, but it's only true for one of them. Oh, he's got two sets of scars. The other was a completely different story. Oh, flashbacks. Back when I was a kid, some of my friends and I always used to play outside and go adventuring together. We could go anywhere, as long as it was close enough to town. Woods, mountains, beaches. We loved to explore every one of them. We got fairly familiar with our surroundings. Then one day, we heard from someone that there was a system of caves nearby. Caves, that was new to us. Of course we went there as soon as we could. We were all very excited. It wasn't a big cave system, not big enough to get lost in, but we still had so much fun that day. So much, in fact, that I wanted to go back there right away. The next day, I called up a few friends, but they had a longer school day than I did, and instead of waiting for them, I decided to go alone. Turns out, going out exploring on my own was a little less exciting than doing so with friends, but I still had a pretty good time, and just walking through the entire underground system was quite an experience. Plus, since I was alone, I could take the time to explore every last nook and cranny that I wanted to. Maybe that was my mistake. When I was in one of the remote corners, the ground suddenly gave way and I fell about 5 metres into the cave below. Luckily, I didn't get any serious injuries from the fall, but as I looked for another exit, an ominous realisation set in. The cave had no entry or exit except the one I came in. There were a few holes, but I could never fit through any of them, or make them bigger in any way. Even if I could, I didn't know where they'd lead. In the end, I had to try and climb out on my own, but as you can imagine, I wasn't exactly the best climber in town. Even so, I still got about halfway before I lost my grip and fell down again, cutting my muzzle on the edge of a rock in the process. It bled pretty badly, but at least I knew to put pressure on the wound. I couldn't try to climb out again, however, so I waited. Oh, cut his face. Sad, Bryce. <laughs> mm. It took several hours for anyone to even notice that I was missing. I must have been there for about four or five hours, all alone, before I heard footsteps above and a search party found me. Long story short, it turned out that besides the cave system we knew about, there was a much larger one right underneath. Those caves can only be entered with a guide now. And I got this lovely reminder of the experience on my muzzle, so that's the one on his face. The one on his throat was from a, a different incident. I had plenty of time to think while I was down there and later in life I often return to that experience. At first, it made me want to get stronger, but I realised that strength alone wouldn't have saved me. Our kind will probably never be able to climb much at all, but I can at least try to better myself. I guess the whole experience also kind of explains why I'm building those stupid wooden models now. Feeling so hopeless while I waited down there, it also made me realise I wanted to help others. Having been saved by the police sure did a lot to make me want to follow the same path, Turns out, I was good enough to become chief. 
Guess that's all of the trash. Thanks for the help. I suppose I'll have to tell you about the second scar some other time. Let's head back. Cool. Back at base. Alright. Looks like it's already later than I thought. We better head to sleep soon. You can take the couch. And I'll sleep on the floor or something. And you got a bed. Oh, this is just a temporary arrangement. I wanted to be closer to work. And the new apartment wasn't ready yet. So I've had to stay here for a while. Okay, fine. With all this armour... I barely even feel anything, so it doesn't matter where I sleep. Okay. There's no need for you to sleep on the floor. Come on, my dude. What do you mean? The couch is big enough for the both of us. <laughs> it is, but I don't know if you... What's that? Well, if you say so. Oh, well, wink in time. There's your bed, your highness. Okay, I'll take care of the light. Okay, let's g we're going to share the bed. Are you even going to sleep in those clothes of yours? It looks kind of uncomfortable. We usually have a separate set of clothing to wear during the night, or we just take off a few layers. Okay. Well, it's not like I could take a layer off, except for this little blanket here. Aha. Uh -huh. Is it okay for you to sleep like this? Yeah. Well, good night. Good night. <laughs>